I ended up buying that thing for my brother-in-law. I have no desire to have it. That Lincoln that I have does everything I need. That welding machine there is much, much more powerful and I just don't have a need for it. So, unless he cons me into helping him fix it, that's gonna be his problem. All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. As you probably already know, my name's Matt and I have an auction problem. Uh, a couple videos ago now, or maybe a couple videos ago, I don't even know at this point. I bought some stuff at the Ritchie Brothers auction, all right? That Humvee being one of them, great. There's a whole video on it if you're interested, down in the description. But today's focus is gonna be on this Link Advantage 400 diesel-powered welder that I picked up there. I actually didn't pick this up for myself, I picked this up for the brother-in-law. And uh, yeah, I never heard it run. It was in the sale, it didn't say that it didn't run. Usually they're pretty good about saying inoperable if it does not run. Now I did try to start this thing out there at the auction, but the battery was completely pooched on it. So I did pull the battery out, took it home last night, gave it a charge, seems to be working. Um, so I just stuck it in here, I haven't done anything yet. And we're gonna see if this thing fires up. Now it doesn't look so bad from this side, but uh, yeah, yeah, from this side, I don't know. I'm sure it's never been abused. Let's go back to it. So I think we paid $3,250 for this thing, which I think that's a fair price. You know, I think it's got a neighborhood of 30 some, 3,000 some hours on it. If it even says right now, 3,587.2 hours. So, like I said, got a charged battery now. I just stuck it in here. Haven't touched anything else yet. I gotta tighten up the terminals still. And then we're gonna see if we can't get this baby fired up and see if it welds. And if everything goes good there and the machine is actually good, he's asked me to go ahead and fix the trailer up so he can tow it home. Typical me fashion, all I've brought with me is a crescent wrench. Luckily, at least I have my Leatherman as well. Because the bolt is spinning. I am not the biggest Lincoln Electric fan. I mean, they seem to weld pretty good. But stuff like this irritates me. I have a Lincoln Ranger 225, as a lot of you guys know. And it, it you know, it's a good welder. It, it welds nice. But the battery on it is also just buried deep in the machine. It's hard to get out. You need a bunch of tools really hard to get the terminals on it's like why? why why couldn't you make this simpler there's there's plenty of room and plenty of ways they could have made it easier to work on but they just chose this way all right well i think that's going to be good enough for us to try this thing out so again i have no idea the condition of anything here i think i pulled the dipstick out at the auction i did do that much um but we should check all that again just to be sure before we go ahead and try to crank anything up. That's probably not original. Yeah, it's fine. Well, behind the screen here we have a Kubota diesel. I can't tell what model. It's a four cylinder though, so it's pretty fair size. I think that makes it a V series. Well, we got oil. We're a little over full, but we are leaning this direction, so I think that's excusable. The oil looks pretty good. What else? Do you see anything in the fuel? Oh yeah, look at that. There's fuel up to the top. Almost, anyway. That's a good sign. Uh, that's got antifreeze. Well, I guess that's all the checking we can do. Let's see if she's gonna pop off. All right, well, I've never run one of these things before, so just studying the controls here. Got high idle, low idle, start button, glow plug button, and I think this should be our ignition switch. Uh-huh, look at that, the gauge has come alive. I can hear the fuel pump clickety-clacking. And uh, just bump the start button, see if we get any chooch. Oh, yeah. 
I don't know, that starter didn't sound so hot. The, uh, I'll give it about 10 seconds of glow plugs here and I'll put you guys up on the tripod and hopefully this thing fires up. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Contact! That ain't good. Rot row. That sounds real bad. <laughs> well, dang it. The engine runs, but it sounds like it's like running away or something, so that's not good. Sometimes the auction's great, sometimes you get burned. I guess we're gonna have to tear this thing down and see what the heck's going on in there. Doesn't sound good, whatever it is. Well, this could be good news. I believe it to be fairly easy to observe that this thing has taken a fall from some height to do damage like that. So I think when that happened, something just shifted or bent in here a little bit. And now the cooling fan is rubbing somewhere. So can you guys see that? The, the blade on the fan has definitely uh, seen some bending. And they all appear to be that way. So. Maybe we might get lucky here and just figure out what's bent where and straighten it out and be back in business. Also for those concerned parties, this is a V2403 Kubota engine. So from what I can tell, the fan is independent from the shroud. So say if this thing were to fall from 10 feet or something off a crane, or God knows how high it fell, uh, in the whole engine and alternator fell, you know, all that gravity, all the weight, that's 90% of the weight of this unit compressed like this. Well, it may have bent something slightly, and I'm not seeing it yet, but it may have bent something and settled down a little bit lower than the shroud, which is what it appears to have done, and now the fan just rubs ever so slightly. I think it's going to be tough for you guys to see this, but I'm just going to take a bar and put it underneath the shaft right there and pivot off of right here and see if I can't get that whole unit to lift up a little bit. If I can, I think all we'll really have to do then is shim up the back side to try to get it better aligned in that fan shroud. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can get a little bit of movement out of it and it's still bolted down, so I should be able to undo the rubber isolator mounts and just put some shims under it and get this thing up where we need to be. Oh yeah, yeah I got it to go way up now. All right, well, I'm attempting to use a ratchet strap here to lift the generator head up off of the mounts and get some shims underneath of them. I think it worked. Three, two, four. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Before I even set it back down, we can go ahead and start it and see if it's going to make all that racket again. Contact!
That is a lot better. So that worked. All you got to do is put a couple shims underneath these rear mounts here for the generator head or welder head or alternator head, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we should be back in business. I love an easy fix. So I got these extra thick hardened washers here and they're nice and uh, wide. These are actually bigger than the diameter of the bolt that goes through them. So it should be plenty of surface area for that to ride on it. Really, I'm not, I'm not even really like doing anything janky here. This is a pretty good way to do this, so. All right, well, I got the shims underneath those isolator mounts. Tighten the bolts up and we're gonna fire this thing back up and let it run a while and see what actually is going on here. All right, we got our isolator mounts tightened down. We can go ahead and try to fire this thing up and uh, let it run for a bit and see what it does. Contact. no intention of keeping this unit but it does have the proper belt squeal all right the belt is pretty darn loose here as well as got some wear to it but it'll be fine for a while tighten it up get rid of that squeal at least every time I walk over to the truck I forget to bring back a proper bar Take like 78, let's fire this thing up. And contact. I would call that an overwhelming success the thing welds fantastic best I can tell um, there's still some features to be played with and experimented with I really don't know I don't even know enough about these welders to understand what half this stuff can does you know you got arc control here I, I imagine that's how much arc force you have stuff for wire feeders that would go on and you know all the different settings here you can do touch TIG with this thing which 
might be something I play around with a little bit before I let the brother-in-law take it. But uh, yeah, the welder works good. We can go ahead and throw the panels back on and then start thinking about fixing this axle here. Now I know it didn't come out perfect. It'd look a little better if I wire wheeled it and I wasn't even using the proper rod to make it really look good. But that was the first time I've ever tried to freehand the logo. It actually didn't turn out too bad. I'm kind of impressed with myself. I don't even chalk out lines or nothing. All right, well, with the old girl up in the air, I guess we can get underneath here and see the damage to this axle now. Before we bought this thing, I thought that it was a different type of axle, and I thought, well, I could probably just fix that thing, weld it back together, but, uh, huh. Now, we're gonna have to order a new axle for sure. Along with a new jack, because, uh, I don't think that one's supposed to be in the shape of an L. So there you go. I mean, that sucker. Whew. She's pretty pooched. So yeah, I don't, I don't think we can fix that. I mean, we could weld it back together. If it was just gonna be something to be driven around here at the farm, yeah, sure, I'd just weld that thing back together and we'd be fine, but he wants to pull this thing down the highway, so not a good idea. Also, the rim. No bueno, gonna need a rim. And uh, actually, looks like a leaf spring as well. Dang it, this thing took quite a fall. Kinda like to have seen that. Everything's a hammer if you use it wrong enough. Wasn't a whole lot holding it. Well, it's a muddy mess out here. It rained all day yesterday, so I brought this machine over here onto the gravel where we can actually work and not be miring in the mud. I got the uh, the new replacement axle here. It just came in yesterday. That was a couple weeks in the waiting, and I got two new rims and tires here. We should be ready to go. Get this thing picked up, and uh, we're gonna have to straighten out those fenders first, and then uh, got new leaf springs as well. We're gonna have to install everything. Let's go. If you listen really closely, you can actually hear the comment section exploding right now. People commenting, you can't work underneath there, that's a suspended load, that's unsafe. I know, but you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm not actually gonna work under it, I'm gonna be working next to it and I keep a really good eye on everything. You know, doing dangerous things carefully, that's what I'm doing.
That's what I call body work. Not too bad there. I think we can live with it. I like it. Got a brand new axle here. Lord, I hope it's right. <laughs> oh, I thought it was gonna fit. Kinda does. Oh yeah, that's good, the axle actually fits. You guys know that I usually do everything in my power to not buy new parts unless I absolutely have to. But I gotta say, it is nice to just install new parts that just work. And you don't have to do all kind of uh, finagling and re-engineering to make them work again great when things just bolt right together. Yeah, looking snazzy now. Ready to go. Throw some new lights on this thing now. Well, these tail lights have seen better days. Got some new replacements here. We'll go ahead and throw these on now.
There's one side. I just dumped out the little bag of connectors here that they give you with the wiring kit or with the tail light kit. And uh, they're just setting you up for failure here, folks. Best thing you could do is take the nuts and washers that you need out of this kit and throw the rest of this crap away. I mean, these little wire hangers, really all they end up doing is chafing wires over the years. These scotch locks, oh man, these are the worst things in the world for outdoor wiring. Throw those away, they're garbage. And wire nuts? Why in the world would they even give you wire nuts? That's disgraceful. Last, but certainly not least, easiest fix of the day. Look at that. that huh almost ready to go down the road I'm gonna plug it into the truck real quick and see if the lights actually work look at that baby we got lights this one here still needs a bit of adjustment that's better well, it's just about ready to go down the road to its new home. Uh, last thing I want to do is fire this thing up, get it good and warm, and then we're going to do an oil change and uh, fuel filter change on it. Been about a week since this thing's been run. Actually, maybe two. Time flies. No glow plugs. Cold start. Contact. Well, we let this thing run for probably 15 minutes. Should be good enough to temperature. Most of these machines like this that have engines inside of a complete enclosure, they have this nice little quick drain hose here that you just stick out and all I did was pull this thing out and give it a quarter turn and it starts draining the oil. Doesn't look too bad. We'll let that drain, change these filters out. Go ahead and bleed this fuel filter out, put some oil in it, and then we're going to be ready to go. If I can get this thing broke loose, Jesus. Perfect. All right, ready to ship it. This hook is just an old bungee cord hook that I threw together because the original one's busted off of the door. So brother-in-law can take weld and do all that stuff. He can fix that, but ready for him to take it home. Well guys, I guess that's another one in the books. 
I was pretty darn worried about this machine when we first uh, started it up. I thought, oh, this doesn't sound good, but luckily enough, it was something minor and we could fix it pretty easily here. And uh, I think we got a darn good machine on our hands now. My brother-in-law should be pretty darn happy with that. And if he's not, I'll just keep it. Anyways, I put a lot of work into all these videos that I make for you guys. If you like the video, please help me out. Let me know down below by hitting the thumbs up button. It doesn't cost you guys anything. And uh, it lets me know that I'm doing a good job on the videos. Don't forget, we got some sweet new merchandise over at the store at dieselcreek.com. There's a link down below in the description. We got hats, t-shirts, uh, beer koozies, stickers coming very soon. And uh, we're going to be working on some other stuff in the very near future. We're going to be working on some other stuff in the very near future as well. Real quick, I want to say for those of you that were messaging me about international shipping to places like Canada and Australia being very expensive, it's very expensive. I'm sorry. I, I, I wish there was something I could do. I promise you we're not marking the shipping up. We're not making money off you on shipping. Uh, it's just the cost of doing business right now, unfortunately. So we've looked into trying to find cheaper ways to send it, but actually the way we're doing it is about as cheap as you can get. So sorry about that. Um, for those of you that support the channel anyhow, I really appreciate that. I know that it's expensive and uh, funds are getting tight for everybody. So the last thing I have for you today is May 21st and 22nd is the annual National Pike Spring Steam Show uh, in Brownsville, Pennsylvania. Now, I go up there every show, and I've met a lot of you guys up there before at the shows. It's a lot of fun. It's nothing but antique equipment, and it's all working and in action, and you can actually get up close and see it going. It's a lot of fun. This year, I'm going to have some special guests with me. I've got Chris from Let's Dig 18 and Mike from Dirt Perfect going to be up there. So we're going to do a little bit of informal meet and greet, nothing fancy. And uh, there's going to be some details as we get a little bit closer to that, but I'm just trying to get the word out there. So if, you, so if you guys are interested in the antique iron at all, make sure you come out. We'd love to see you. love to meet you. And uh, yeah, hope to see you there. That's it. I quit my jabbering. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one.